Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, July 17th, 2013. We begin with news from the world of medicine. Scientists from Northwestern Medicine have made a first step toward achieving interspecies organ transplants. Now that might sound kind of Frankensteinish, but it's actually really good news for sufferers of type 1 diabetes. Right now, a treatment option for this type of diabetes is the transplant of insulin-producing islet cells from a deceased donor. Unfortunately, such donors are in short supply, and the transplantation is still tricky. If transplantations from other species were possible, we would have an essentially unlimited supply of donors. Because really, who eats pig pancreas? These scientists are still working with mice transplanting islet cells from rats. While they are quite closely related, it's still a separate species, and the transplants were successful without permanent use of immunosuppressive drugs. To do this, they took a specific type of white blood cell found in the spleen from the rats, killed the cells, but injected the fragments into the mice. Scavenger cells in the mice's own spleen and livers processed the fragments, teaching the T-cells to accept them as not foreign. They were then able to transplant the rat insulin-producing cells while temporarily suppressing B-cells from the immune system. Once the B-cells returned to normal levels, they no longer attacked the rat cells and were allowed to function normally. After this treatment, no immune-suppressing drugs were necessary for the entire 300 days that the mice were followed. Eventually, the scientists planned to apply these strategies to pig-to-human transplantation, potentially saving many lives. Next is a story from the world of neuroscience. A team from Ohio State University recently released two studies related to stroke recovery with some surprising results. The first examines the relationship between lesion size resulting from stroke damage and upper extremity recovery. The volume of brain lesions has often been used by physicians to determine the severity of damage and the necessary amount and length of rehabilitation therapy. But analyzing 139 stroke survivors, who on average had their stroke up to five years ago, showed no correlation between lesion size and recovery outcome. While this study is just preliminary, it does challenge some historical assessment of stroke damage and may suggest other evaluation strategies. The second study was awesome because it involved robots. It compared traditional occupational therapist-guided rehabilitation to exercises done with the assistance of an exoskeleton-like arm brace. Both methods showed roughly equivalent effectiveness, but the hope is that these results will lead to an increase in robot-assisted therapy, potentially allowing stroke survivors to be more independent. Those in the study who used the robot arm also reported feeling stronger and more positive about the rehabilitation therapy. This team hopes to further study optimized rehabilitation strategies, as incidents of strokes are on the rise. And instead of a third story, just for this week, check the description for a link to a post Q wrote on United Academics. It's more science news goodness, particularly about microparticles used to control stem cell growth. Check it out. And hope you enjoyed this episode. In relation to our second story, what medical applications would you use robotics in? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.